of emergency, several communities underwater, roofs ripped away by heavy winds, residents rescued by helicopter as Barry carves a dangerous path inland. Now a tornado watch in effect. The blackout mystery, a major section of New York City grinding to a halt as 40 blocks, including Times Square, go dark. Hundreds trapped, what the power company can't answer. President Trump being called racist after firing off several tweets, seeming to aim them at female minority Democrats in Congress, telling them to go back to where they came from. Raging River rescues, one raft caught on camera being sucked into a waterfall, and the new video showing a dramatic rescue after another boat flipped. Your money, Amazon Prime Day, just hours away. From TVs to toys, we help you navigate the best deals on more than a million products. And epic battle, two of the world's top tennis stars slugging it out at Wimbledon. Why this final is officially one for the record books. From ABC News, this is ABC World News Tonight. And good evening, thanks for joining us on this Sunday. I'm Tom Yamas. And we begin tonight with the state of emergency in Louisiana, where Barry continues to pound residents with life-threatening conditions. The slow-moving rainmaker that made landfall as a hurricane churning inland tonight with relentless rain bands swamping several low-lying communities, some neighborhoods completely submerged. There is significant wind and tree damage, a powerful gust you see here sweeping the roof straight off this hangar. Near Terrebonne Parish, Coast Guard helicopters hoisting this resident and his dog to safety. And concerns mounting in Jefferson Parish as cemeteries there have begun to flood. This storm is not done yet. There's a tornado watch in effect tonight. Our senior meteorologist Rob Marciano leads off our storm coverage from just outside of New Orleans. Tonight, Barry's relentless wrath slamming Louisiana. Watch the roof of this hangar ripped away in 60 mile per hour winds. Andy Carr Debris strewn across the highway. The storm on a slow motion march inland, dumping torrential rain across the northern Gulf Coast. The dangerous floodwaters still pounding the outskirts of New Orleans. Look at this wave action off Lake Pontchartrain. A full day after landfall, and the storm surge just relentless. A good three feet of water still pushing into this neighborhood. And just south of the city, this eerie sight a cemetery flooded, tombstones underwater. To the west in Lafayette, water levels in the Vermilion River rapidly rising throughout the day. Watch as the floodwaters engulf this dock. In the past 10 minutes, this water has come up probably another two inches. More than a half a foot of rain falling across the state this weekend. Severe flooding inundating neighborhoods and highways. Residents forced to drive through flooded streets. This is the worst I've seen it, yeah. The Coast Guard rescuing a dozen people, including this man and his dog. Utility crews lining the highways, now scrambling to restore power across the state. Nearly 100,000 still in the dark tonight. At least two reported tornadoes in East Baton Rouge. This time lapse showing the storm clouds swirling near Walker, Louisiana. The weekend storm leaving a trail of destruction. Now people returning to salvage what's left of their flooded homes and businesses. John and Kit lost their home here when Katrina hit. Wow. They rebuilt on 15-foot stilts, but their home still impacted by Hurricane Barry. See, this is our driveway right here. Oh, wow. So your driveway's still underwater. Yeah. And that's the original driveway from when yeah. Katrina came through. Everything else has been replaced. Yep. All new. And the rain and flooding still a major concern tonight. Rob Marciano's in Mandeville, just outside of New Orleans. And Rob, we see that water danger right there. And it's going to take a long time to drain, uh, Tom. We're looking at water issues right into the middle of the week. Also, I have a tornado watch here that extends into Mississippi. Here it is on the radar scope, the center of this system across northwest Louisiana. But we've had flood warnings in Hattiesburg, nearly 10 inches of rain in Mississippi, south of Baton Rouge, and now Beaumont, Texas as well. So we've got flood watches that extend well north into southern Illinois and southern Missouri. Over the next two days, it's going to be a big rainmaker as it spins up through Arkansas. Look at the rain getting into Memphis during the morning hours, and then pushing up through Paducah and eventually up and through the Ohio River Valley, looking at a half a foot of rain across Memphis right through Tuesday. So a flooding event that goes well inland right through the middle part of the week.
Tom. And we will stay tracking Barry throughout the next several days. Rob, our thanks to you. Next tonight to the blackout mystery here in New York City, paralyzing much of Manhattan last night. This is the moment inside a packed Madison Square Garden. Dancers on the stage at the J-Lo concert when the lights, you see it right there, go out. The massive outage triggered by a substation fire, cutting power to a 40-block footprint. You can see it in these aerial images, including Times Square and Rockefeller Center. And while electricity was restored, the power company is apologizing, and there are still questions about what caused that fire. Here's ABC's Ariel Reshef. Tonight, the city that never sleeps is very much awake. <laughs> After that major power outage Saturday night sent a large swath of Manhattan screeching to a halt. So we have a smoky uh, transformer right in the middle of the intersection. Multiple buildings without any power. Midtown and the upper west side of the city plunging into darkness around 7 p.m. on a steamy Saturday night. We experienced a significant disturbance at one of our electric transmission stations that eventually interrupted power to approximately 73,000 customers. The governor deploying state police and the National Guard. Emergency crews racing to about 400 reports of people trapped in elevators. There's people trapped in elevators in both towers. This dog leading the way up a staircase by glow stick. Early on, terrorism ruled out. I was in contact with the New York office of the FBI. Uh, they said it was not a cyber event. There was no criminality involved. The blackout shutting off stoplights at busy intersections. Some subway stops partially paralyzed. Many passengers stuck underground. In iconic Times Square, normally vibrant billboards pitch black. And on Broadway, lights out. And a Jennifer Lopez concert at Madison Square Garden stopped midstream. The massive venue evacuated. During those eerie five hours, New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio trying to reassure New Yorkers from the presidential campaign trail in Iowa. There are plenty of situations where I would go home immediately. There are others where I would not. Today, returning home to brief the public. I'm in regular touch with my folks, confirming the situation is being handled properly. All right, Ariel Reshef joins us now. Ariel, the electric company is investigating. Are authorities any closer to determining what caused this blackout? Well, Tom, Con Edison has identified the location of that malfunction, but hasn't yet figured out exactly what caused it. They say that could take a couple of weeks to determine. Officials say everyone had power restored by about midnight, and that was their top priority. Tom. Ariel Reshef for us tonight. Ariel, thank you. Next tonight to the immigration debate, and on the same day he warned nationwide ICE raids were coming, President Trump turning up the political heat with tweets critics are calling racist and xenophobic. The president launching an attack apparently aimed at female minority members of Congress who he says should go back to where they came from. He also defended the conditions in those migrant holding facilities toured by the vice president on Friday. It is a stark reminder of just how charged this debate has become. And ABC's David Wright is at the White House with the details. Tonight, growing outrage over the latest Trump tirade. Without naming names, the president called out progressive Democrat congresswomen, tweeting, why don't they go back and help fix the totally broken and crime-infested places from which they came? Then come back and show us how it is done. Adding, I'm sure that Nancy Pelosi would be very happy to quickly work out free travel arrangements. It's not the first time the president has taken aim at these women of color who've been sharply critical of his immigration policies. A group of people that came from, I don't know where they came from. Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib of Michigan shot back, keep talking, you just make me work harder. I'm proud of my Palestinian roots, and a weak bully like you never wins. Congresswoman Ilhan Omar of Minnesota accused Trump of stoking white nationalism because you are angry that people like us are serving in Congress and fighting against your hate-filled agenda. And from Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez of New York, Mr. President, the country I come from and the country we all swear to is the United States. On the campaign trail, Democratic candidates seized on the president's tweets. Yeah, I'm so sick of people being told they don't belong here because they disagree with those in power. I am freaking appalled that the president of the United States conducts himself in such a disgraceful and racist way. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi 
Pelosi has at times conflicted with the young progressive faction, but she stood by them today, tweeting, I reject Donald Trump's xenophobic comments meant to divide our nation. All right, and David Wright joins us now from the White House. And David, that's not President Trump's only Twitter tirade today. He's also defending the vice president's border tour. That's right, Tom. Uh, the president says that Pence's tour proved that detention facilities from children for children are well run and clean. And as for some of the men's cages being standing room only, Trump offered zero sympathy, tweeting, if too crowded, tell them not to come to USA. Tom? David Wright reporting from the White House for us tonight. David, thank you. And with the president promising those nationwide ICE raids would begin in a major American city today, some immigrants are afraid to leave their homes while some protesters took to the streets. Here's ABC's Clayton Sandell with that part of the story. Tonight, the threat of immigration raids that kicked off protests around the country have yet to show up in force. It was billed as a major operation by President Trump. It starts on Sunday, and they're going to take people out, and they're going to bring them back to their countries. The plan to arrest and deport up to 2,000 undocumented immigrants. But immigration groups and local officials nationwide say they haven't seen it. New York's mayor tweeting, no confirmed ICE activity. ICE says it's out there. We are doing targeted enforcement actions against specific individuals who have had their day in immigration court and have been ordered removed by an immigration judge. Mayors in some of the targeted cities say the president is playing politics to appeal to his base. Disrupting families who are just here trying to live their life, that's not who we are or should be as Americans. This woman, too afraid to show her face, says her husband, living here for three decades, was just deported. She's worried she could be next. She says, I take a chair and place it behind the door or grab something heavy and place that behind the door. Immigration groups work the real threat could come tomorrow, Monday, when people have to go back to work or take kids to school, exposing themselves to a possible arrest. Tom? Clayton Sandell for us. Clayton, thank you. We turn out to a pair of dangerous rafting accidents. Take a look at this scene in Pennsylvania. A packed raft sucked into a waterfall after ignoring signs to turn back. A second group of rafters rescued in Georgia. Here's ABC Stephanie Ramos with the warning on the water. Tonight, a group of rafters are safe after these terrifying moments on a river in Ohio Pile State Park in Pennsylvania. Caller reporting a raft went over the falls. At least six people still in the water. Watch as the group's raft heads directly toward the waterfall, then flips over, tossing all six people into the water. The group escaping with minor scrapes and bruises. A park official says they were on a rented raft, missed a turn, and passed several other signs warning them not to proceed. When they heard people also warning them, it was too late. The river water was moving too fast. All six of them had their life jackets on, so when they went over the falls, uh, that was probably the thing that saved them, and that's why they're with us today. Around the same time Saturday in Georgia, first responders rescued a man and a group of 10 children from treacherous rapids. This group also on their own, without a guide. You can minimize those risks. One, and the big, easiest one, is go fully guided, where you actually have a guide in your raft on the trip with you. Experts say if you do fall out of a raft, try to float on your back. And don't forget to always secure your life jacket and helmet. Tom. Stephanie Ramos with that wild video tonight. Stephanie, thank you. We turn now to a murder mystery developing in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Authorities say the body of 75-year-old Sadie Roberts Joseph, founder of the city's African-American Museum, was discovered in the trunk of a car. Police calling her a treasure to the community, and tonight they are hunting for her killer. ABC's Alex Perez is in Baton Rouge. Tonight, authorities in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, on the hunt for whoever killed the beloved founder of the African American History Museum here. Sadie Roberts Joseph was a local icon, her murder sending shockwaves through this community. This particular crime on this particular individual left me empty. The prominent community leader's body was found Friday, stuffed in the trunk of this white car about three miles from her home. Authorities investigating the case as a homicide. Officers who often worked side by side with her on projects stunned. She's special. She's touched so many people in this community over the years as a true public servant. The 75-year-old spent decades raising awareness of African-American history and the civil rights movement, a passion she often talked about. 
embrace our history, to learn of our past. Tom Roberts Joseph had visited with her sister earlier in the day, but her sibling says nothing seemed unusual. Authorities here say they have a team of detectives working this case, but no arrests have been made. Tom? Alex Perez with that strange murder mystery train. All right, Alex, thank you. The Pentagon has identified a decorated Green Beret killed in combat in Afghanistan on Saturday. 40-year-old Sergeant Major James G. Ryan Sarter of Teague, Texas, died from injuries from enemy fire. The Taliban has claimed responsibility for that attack. With a prime opportunity for shoppers to save big, Amazon Prime Day now just hours away. ABC's Diane Macedo is out to save your money. Tonight, Amazon's biggest sale of the year is just hours away. It's a two-day parade of epic deals. The company is promising more than a million deals worldwide. You don't need to go shopping anymore. You just go to Amazon Prime. The buying bonanza has been such a success that last year, Amazon's website crashed. And this year, the online retailer is extending its sale to two days. New deals will launch as often as every five minutes, including deep discounts like $50 off the Echo, up to 50% off on select TVs, and up to 40% off on select toys. And now other retailers are trying to get in on the shopping frenzy, offering deals of their own. Walmart is running a competing sale starting today, and eBay and Target will be slashing their own prices beginning on Prime Day. Really be smart about your purchases. Make a list in advance of items you want to target. Set alerts and install browser extensions so you can track prices easily across multiple websites and make sure that you're getting the best deal. Prime Day deals are available to Amazon Prime members only. A subscription is $119 a year, but you can sign up for a free one-month trial. Tom? Lots of people already logging on. All right, time now for our index and dramatic video tonight showing a team of roofers rescuing two children from a burning apartment building in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Take a look at this. The heroes jumping into action, catching a baby girl first and then a toddler. Both were dropped from a second story window. The workers using a ladder to rescue the parents, then going door to door, clearing out the entire building. No serious injuries reported. A new video tonight showing a frightening elevator accident. That elevator plummeting four stories, crashing to the ground below and trapping a man inside the wreckage. This happening in Madrid. Rescuers using a jack to hold the elevator in place, prying open the doors before pulling the man out and rushing him to the hospital. Authorities say he's going to survive, but he has several broken bones. No word yet on what caused that elevator to malfunction. And an amazing scene in France at the annual Bastille Day celebration. New video tonight showing the so-called soldier of the future soaring above the Champs-Élysées on a jet-powered hoverboard with a rifle in hand. The French inventor taking to the air, showing off his device that could be used in an aerial attack on the battlefield. And the historic battle on center court. Novak Djokovic defeating Roger Federer, winning his ninth Wimbledon crown in a five-set thriller. The marathon match lasting just shy of five hours, now officially the longest Wimbledon final in history. And finally, America Strong, an update tonight on a story we brought you earlier this summer. One family's mission to make their son's life better is now helping even more children. Two weeks ago, we brought you the story of the Moreland family. Nearly anywhere you go inside the Moreland family home, you're bound to find little Brody coming in hot. Brody wasn't always a man on the move. For a while there, he spent so much of the day like this, on his belly, unable to go anywhere. He was born with spina bifida and spinal cord atrophy, essentially paralyzed below the chest. When Brody was about eight months old, I overheard some other parents talking about how their kids just destroyed their house and got toys everywhere. And it almost brought me to tears because for me, Brody wasn't ever going to be able to do that. Brody's parents decided they weren't going to let life pass him by. So his dad, Taylor, got to work. Completely self-taught, he started to design, build, and test a device he called the frog. They felt Brody looked like a little frog when they put him in it. It was life-changing for both him and us. Since our story aired, the Moorlands have been able to raise nearly $100,000 more, funding more frogs for children completely free of charge. After your story aired on World News Tonight, we more than doubled our goal on our GoFundMe. Um, and then just the amount of the people who have contacted us has been incredible from all over the world. The orders that have come in, uh, the people that want to help us. They've also been receiving videos of kids using the frog. Here's Mighty Max and nine-month-old Avery. 
We're just excited to get more little people moving. So the more uh -huh. people who know about the frog, the better, I think. Mm -hmm. And we agree. If you want to help, that GoFundMe site is Help Brody Get Kids Moving. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Tom Yamas in New York.